FDA approval. I have a question for you. Are, yeah. are there people, I've heard of people that are, uh, for whatever reason, resistant to DMT experiences? Like, it doesn't work with them. I, I think there, there are some, and it could be... Um, Biological, we don't yeah. know. It could be that they're just so okay. They're, it could be that they're so resisting the experience. So Stan Groff actually talked about work with obsessive compulsives that he did with LSD, and he had some that he could give over a thousand micrograms of LSD, enormous amounts of LSD, and they could still play chess. Wow! So there's a way where you can control your mind so much that that even psychedelics won't won't, won't happen. <sighs> Wow. Yeah. So, so I, I, think... I wonder, but but there are people like Jamie has a thing about edibles. Mm. Like Jamie can kind of eat like a like a foot long sub from Subway. <laughs> of, <laughs> of, of, I'm not kidding. He can put down extraordinary amounts of edibles and he feels nothing. Yeah, 1350 is the highest I've gone. Do you know how crazy that is? It's amazing. <laughs> Thirteen fifty, dude. Two hundred will put you on the moon. I was at a concert, watching a concert, having conversations. Well, what about when you smoke? Is it different? No, uh, sure. Smoking works just fine. Smoking works, but edible yeah. stuff. Yeah. It, it is a different drug when it's passed through your digestive system, and, um, and that's right. I, I yeah, we've a, talked about it ad nauseum. Yeah, oh, well, eleven well, hydroxy metabolite, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'll just tell a funny story about my wife Lynn, which was <laughs> that her mother had uh, pain, Marianne. Her mother had pain. And um, Lynn thought that, um, and I suggested actually, maybe small amounts of uh, THC or CBD might help her mom. And so Lynn was like, okay, I will um, try it first before I give it to my mom. So she took a, a I brought home a, a edible, some chocolates, and she took one square, which was 10 milligrams of uh, cannabis. She took it at her mom's assisted living place about an hour, about a mile away from where we live. and. Um, and then she's ready to drive home, and so she's driving home, uh, to, and she thinks nothing much is going to happen. So the road starts tilting. She starts having a <laughs> terrible time. She barely gets to our house. And, and then she's got this panic reaction because she is thinking that um, she might forget to breathe. She, oh might, she might die because she's going to forget to breathe. Oh, boy. And um, our daughter, Lila, and our daughter, Ellie, were, were there with us. And we were, like, trying to cheer her up and, like, you're not going to die. And we're, But we're also, like, massaging her feet and laughing at her. But it was a horrible experience. Yeah. So some people have edibles and, and they yeah, just have horrible experiences. horrible experiences. And, and other people, I guess, get edibles and nothing happens. Yeah. I mean, um, it depends on so many factors, right? I think there's yeah. biological factors, is your current yeah. level of anxiety. But to just yeah. claim that it's innocuous, I think, is just yeah. so foolish. Yeah. I think if there is a backlash where, I, you know, the, the backlash in the 60s was political, you know, against psychedelics and hippies and stuff. The backlash that happened in the late 70s, early 80s, when it looked like marijuana might be um, – Legalized was parents against the, you know. Right. Well, it's also all that Nancy Reagan, yeah. d just say no shit. 